hi, this is Felicia Greenfield here to welcome you back to Caring for the Caregiver. We are arriving at class five and today's topic is activity engagement. Um, but I just want to quickly review with you what we've covered so far. After an overview of caregiving and dementia, we talked about thoughts and how to notice unhelpful thoughts and replace them with more helpful thoughts. We also learned how to track our moods and how thoughts and behaviors can influence our mood. Next, we talked about skills for effective communication, communicating with the person for whom you're caring. And then we, last week, we talked about um, becoming a behavioral detective, and we used an ABC chain for antecedent behavior and consequence. I hope you've been keeping up with your journaling and that you are um, starting to be able to apply some of these skills in real time to your caregiving situation. Um, in addition, we talked about several relaxation uh, methods for you. We did the signal breath. We did 20 breaths. Uh, we, and we uh, listened to, we did a body scan, a 20 minute body scan. And then we listened to music as a mindfulness activity. Um, I have one final mindfulness activity that I'll introduce you to at the end of this class. Um, but next up, we're learning about um, meaningful activity engagement. So a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how increasing pleasant activities can help you and your mood as a caregiver. Um, and today we're going to focus more on increasing pleasant activities for the person for whom you're caring. Um, increasing, we, as we learned earlier, and as we probably know intuitively, doing things we enjoy improves our mood and it also changes our behaviors and we're less likely to engage in troubling behaviors if we are um, engaged in meaningful activity. So I'm using a few terms here. I'm using the term engagement and I'm also using the term activity. I want to add another word to this, which is meaningful. So I want us to really be focusing on meaningful activity engagement. Um, and so first we're going to start off with engagement. Why is engagement so important? Um, when, when activities are meaningful and when we are meaningfully engaged in activity, um, we're, we experience real benefits and the same applies to a person with dementia. So you and I can make a decision um, and choose to do something we find meaningful and we can initiate that um, and we can go ahead and 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 do it. Um, your, the, your care recipient with dementia can no longer really identify or may no longer be able to identify what they find meaningful and certainly it's hard to initiate. So it's difficult for them if, the, if you say, go do X, Y, Z, they may not know where to begin. Um, so it in, this section on ac meaningful activity engagement really does um, require a lot or some substantial effort on your part. So, um, and this is really important because in a person with dementia, being engaged in activity can decrease agitation and challenging behaviors such as wandering or aggression. So the more they're engaged, the less likely they are to do those things. It can decrease anxiety and depression, improve sleep, and it truly over, overall, it um, maintains brain health over the long run. And, it, and while it does require some effort on your part, after the initial investment, it frees up your kind of on-duty time. Um, it also can increase feelings of connectedness between you and your care recipient and can help balance out some of the less pleasant interactions. But above all, um, the innate human need to participate in meaningful occupation or pastime doesn't go away in the context of dementia. It may be more difficult for your relative to feel this, fill this need him or herself, and so that's where you come in. So I'm going to ask you to have your journal available or your binder form um, because we're going to start talking about activities uh, that you can start to implement with the person for whom you're caring. So 
We're going to start right at the beginning. Knowing where to start can be the most daunting part of setting up an engaged day. I want you to spend a couple of minutes thinking about the following questions and then pause this recording and jot down the answers to your questions either in your journal or on the binder form. Um, so I want you to consider where your loved one worked. If they worked in the past, what did they do? What was their job? Did they have any hobbies? What did they do for fun? Write these things down. What did you and they do for fun together? So they may have had their own activities that they did independently, and then there may have been things that you did together. Write that down. Also consider what their role was in the family. What were their responsibilities around the house? So take a minute to pause the recording and really think through these, you know, engagement questions. And then when you're ready, you can un unpause and come back to the recording. And if you can't think of answers to these questions, don't worry. You can still introduce new activities to your loved one, even if they've never expressed an interest in them before. So it's important to remember that dementia can change personality, including likes and dislikes. So please don't disregard anything. Um, I'm going to ask you to never say never. So for example, many people with memory loss who had no prior interest in arts and crafts um, love to use adult coloring books. So even if they didn't like it before, keep an open mind and, and be open to any possibilities that might lend themselves to meaningful engagement. So some of the items that you listed <clears throat> in the last entry uh, won't be practical on a day-to-day -day basis, but we can use them as a, as a jumping off point. And I wanna share some tips with you to adapt um, activities to make them manageable every day. So first of all, I want to get you to consider scaling the activity down. So for example, if you and the person for whom you're caring used to go on long walks together, can you try cutting the walk in half um, or walk in a different environment? If the two of you used to love to travel together, can you come up with a short day trip itinerary? Or can you fantasize about um, you know, your, your ideal trip together um, and do some planning together even if you never take the trip. It engages the person uh, using the activity that you once loved to do together. Another tip is to break the activity into smaller, more manageable chunks. So for example, if your relative used to throw elaborate dinner parties, try giving them small, discrete tasks one at a time. Um, like for example, please chop this carrot, or let's go through the cookbook together, together to choose a meal. Uh, setting a table can be a great activity. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can always go back and fix it later, but just giving the person a job to do, something that gives them a sense of purpose and meaning. Focus on roles and feelings. So let's say your mom was a nurse but had to retire. Um, think about what she may have gotten out of her work. She may have enjoyed helping and nurturing people during a difficult time. So you might try giving her a case and asking for her advice. Okay, so a friend, oh, mom, let me ask a friend at work is experiencing X, Y, or Z. What would your advice be? And have her, and just to have her engage in a conversation with you that uses her skill set and in the things that she found meaningful in life as a way to engage. So we just talked about some ways to adapt activity and now we're going to spend a few minutes on um, just some more general tips. The most important piece of advice I have is to focus on the process rather than the results. Uh, so if your relative spends an hour sorting items and it's more jumbled than it was um, prior to them being worked on, that's okay. Um, the, more, the most important thing is that they're engaged. So like I use that example of setting the table, you can always go back and reset it. A lot of people complain that the person 
doesn't you know load the dishwasher right or doesn't wash the dishes properly that's okay i know it adds more work for you um, to go back and fix things later but in the moment if the person's engaged that means that they're not going to be acting out um, choose activities that can be done in brief amounts of time, short bursts, so people with memory loss can have shorter attention spans and have difficulty concentrating. So you want to find things that, that can be done um, within their attention span abilities, which you will know best. Have a few activities available. So if your loved one tries one and is not into it, you can quickly move on to another one. Okay, so have maybe option A, B, and C at hand. Another suggestion is to have the materials set up in advance and keep the surrounding environment as distraction-free as possible. So for example, if you're going to be doing, let's say, um, planting, planting uh, seeds in little in little pots. You wanna clear out an area um, that only has the pots the dirt and the seeds and any kind of utensils or tools that you may need to do the planting. Um, keep the envir environment free of other clutter that might be distracting. Same goes if you're going to uh, begin a project coloring or drawing. Just put out the colored pencils, the paper or the paints, anything that they need that's specific to the activity and try to get the rest of the stuff put away to eliminate distractions. Also, um, you might want to change your approach. So we know that if you ask a yes or no question to someone with dementia, Unfortunately, a lot of times the answer is going to be no. And the reason for this could be control. Like if you say, do you want a color? And they are anxious about what you mean by that. Um, if they simply say no, that can eliminate some of the anxiety for them. Um, but if you say something like, uh, now it's time to color, or I would love for you to join me, they may be more likely. So you start doing it, you ask them to join you. You don't ask them, do you want to color? Because the ch chances of them saying no will be pretty high. So you just start doing it. Another approach um, change could be, um, instead of asking at all, just sit down next to your relative and start doing the activity yourself. And if you're doing it and you look like you may be enjoying it, there's a good chance that they'll wanna join you um, in that activity. Okay, also, I know that this is not a very social time in our world, but if you can make activities social and involve family and friends, even over the internet, um, over Zoom, that might be helpful. So if your relative refuses an activity, don't force them to participate. You can always go to your plan B or plan C and then try that activity again later. Don't say, well, they didn't do it once, so they'll never do it again. There is a chance that they, um, they, that, that they're just not in the mood right now, but at a later date, that might be a really successful activity. Now I'm just going to read you a long list of activity suggestions um, just to get you thinking and then I'm going to ask you to come up with your own list of activities that you think your care recipient would enjoy doing and find some meaning and purpose in. So listening to music or playing music, going to see a concert or watching a concert um, virtually. Uh, might be a nice activity to do. Dancing. I can't tell you, especially during coronavirus, how many people I talk to are just putting on music in the house and dancing, even getting a little dressed up to make it fun. Um, go through old photo albums or family videos. Take down an oral history or simply share old family stories. Cook a simple meal together or bake cookies. Do a jigsaw puzzle or a word search if that's their thing. Listen to a book or short story on tape or a podcast. Read poetry. Paint, draw, or collage. Go for a nature walk. Do a relaxed exercise video such as chair yoga. Plant and tend to house or yard plants. 
join a memory cafe in person or online. Right now, ours are all online. Um, and I bet other memory cafes are online too. You could do a Google search for, for different memory cafes and possibly do a couple a week. Spend time with pets or children if that feels safe right now. Um, sorting. So if you have someone who likes to rummage, um, give, you know, one thing that you can do is have a box of tools or take all the silverware and dump it into a box and then ask your person to, to sort the silverware. I worked with a woman whose husband loved, um, to crush like, um, I don't know, like soda bottles, like a, a two gallon or whatever, two liter, um, plastic Coke bottle. He liked to like, just kind of, he liked that sensation of squeezing an empty bottle. So that that's another tactile thing, folding laundry, washing dishes, looking at magazines, you know, maybe even cutting pictures out of magazines for your next collage and talk about the images that are, are, um, interesting to the person that you're, you're caring for. Okay, and then we have a rummage box. A rummage box are for, is for those folks who love to go through drawers and empty everything out. You can get a box and fill it up with stuff that they like to touch or rummage or sort. And then when they're acting, when you're starting to see some anxiety or agitation, just pull the box out, have them go through the rummage box and, um, and then you can clean it all up later and they're not going through your drawers. It's a more contained and controlled um, way to, for those kind of rummaging impulses. Okay, I'd like you to pause the recording and jot down your ideas for activity engagement, either in your journal or on your binder form. There's room for 10. You can choose more. If any of the ideas that I shared with you are interesting, you can write them down um, or come up with your own. I want to share one more that I remember from a man who took this class in person many years ago. Um, his wife really liked makeup, but she didn't know how to apply it anymore. She could no longer apply her makeup. And so when we he was taking this class, he had the idea to take her to a department store and ask the clerk at whatever makeup counter they went to, to teach him how to apply makeup to her. So he invested some money in makeup that she liked. He had the clerk give his wife a makeover, but also to teach him how to do it so that when they were at home, um, he was able to put her makeup on for her. And I thought that was really a lovely way to spend some time together. It involves touch. It increases a bond. So anything like that that you can think of or anything else that's meaningful to the person um, for whom you're caring, just jot some of those items down. Because as you can imagine, for homework this week, we're going to have you try some meaningful activity with your loved one. We're getting close to the end of this recorded lecture. This is a short one. Um, before we get to the homework, I want to do another meditation with you. I don't have the script in this slide deck, but I will. It is uploaded in the uh, week five um, folder on the website where you're downloading all of your materials, um, the script for this. So at this point, at, for the, at this point, I'd just like you to listen to me um, guide you through this meditation that you might be able to, um, to do later by yourself. And this is a, a meditation that I'm particularly fond of, and I hope that you jo enjoy it as well. It's called, excuse me, it's called a loving kindness meditation. So again, as in all of our meditations, I'd like you to find a comfortable position either in a chair or lying down, but um, you want to be comfortable with your feet on the floor or somehow your body um, upright and supported. And once you find yourself in a comfortable position, close your eyes and try to relax your whole body, paying attention to your breath, the way it feels entering and exiting your body. And I'd like to ask you to keep your eyes closed throughout this whole visualization and bring your awareness inward. Go inside into yourself. Without straining or concentrating, 
Just relax and follow my instructions. Take a deep breath in and let it all out. Take another deep breath in through your nose. Hold it for a beat and then let it go. One more deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm going to ask you to receive loving kindness. Keeping your eyes closed, think of a person close to you who loves you very much. It could be someone from the past or the present, someone still in life or who has passed. It could be a spiritual teacher or a guide. Imagine that person standing on your right side, sending you their love. That person is sending you wishes for your safety, for your well-being, and for your happiness. Feel the warmth and love coming from that person towards you. Now bring to mind the same person or another person who cherishes you deeply. Imagine that person standing on your left side, sending you wishes for wellness, health, and happiness. Feel the kindness and warmth coming from, from that person to you. Now imagine that you are surrounded on all sides by people who love you and who have loved you. Picture all your friends and loves, loved ones surrounding you. They're sending you love, wishes, and happiness, well-being, and, ha and health. Bask in the warm wishes and love coming from all sides. You are filled and overflowing with warmth and love. Now we're going to focus on sending loving kindness. Bring your awareness back to the person standing on your right side. Begin to send love that you feel back to that person. You and this person are similar. Just like you, this person wishes to be happy. Send all of your love and warm wishes to that person. In your mind, repeat the following phrases silently. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. May you live with ease. May you be happy. May you be free from pain. Now focus your awareness to the person standing on your left side. Begin to direct the person within you to that person. Send all of your love and warmth to that person. That person and you are alike. Just like you, that person wishes to have a good life. Repeat the, violent, the following phrases silently in your mind. Just as I wish to, may you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease and happiness. Just as I wish to, may you be safe. May you be healthy. May you live with ease and happiness. Just as I wish to, may you be safe, may you be healthy, may you live with ease and happiness. Now picture another person that you love, perhaps a relative or friend. This person, like you, wishes to have a happy life. Send warm wishes to that person. Repeat the following phrases silently. May your life be filled with happiness, health, and well-being. May your life be filled with happiness, health, and well-being. May your life be filled with happiness, health, and well-being. Now think of an acquaintance, someone you don't know very well, and toward whom you do not have any particular feeling. You and this person are alike in your wish to have a good life. Send all of your wishes for well-being to that person, 
repeating silently the following phrases. Just as I wish to, may you also live with ease and happiness. Just as I wish to, may you also live with ease and happiness. Just as I wish to, may you also live with ease and happiness. Now bring to mind another acquaintance toward whom you have neutral feeling. It could be a neighbor, a colleague, or someone else that you see around but do not know very well. Like you, this person wishes to experience joy and well-being in their life. Send all of your positive wishes to that person, repeating the following phrases silently. May you be ha happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from pain. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from pain. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be free from pain. Now expand your awareness and picture the whole globe in front of you as a little ball. Send warm wishes to all living beings on the globe who like you want to be happy. Just as I wish to, may you live with ease, happiness, and good health. Just as I wish to, may you live with ease, happiness, and good health. Just as I wish to, may you live with ease, happiness, and good health. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And then let it out. Take another deep breath in and let it go. And notice the state of your mind and how you feel after this meditation. When you're ready, you may open your eyes. If you choose to, you can reflect on this meditation in your journal. In your journal. Um, just make an entry about how this meditation made you feel and if this is a meditation that you would like to do again. Thank you for participating in the loving kindness meditation with me. Finally, on to our homework. So it just keeps building. Um, if you are still doing mood trackers, I'd like to con continue to ask you to do one a day. Practice your signal breath once a day. 20 breaths at least once a day. If you're still working on the thought records, I'd like you to do one more this week. I'd like to ask you to continue evaluating your ongoing communication. I'd like to ask you to continue um, managing behaviors in the way we talked about before, using the ABC chain and documenting those behavioral changes in your journal to see if you are making progress there. Um, I'd like you to practice a 20 minute body scan, listen to music three times a week, um, try engaging your loved one in meaningful activity at least twice this week. I'd like you to do more, um, but if, if it feels too daunting, at least twice um, spend some time engaging in meaningful activity. And then finally, if you found the loving kindness meditation um, helpful, then there is a script. You can either listen to my recorded um, version that we just listened to, or there's a script on the website that you can download and read yourself. Again, with any questions about any of this content or downloading information from the website, feel free to email me at feliciagreenfield at upenn.edu at Penn Medicine. I'm sorry, let me start that over. felicia.greenfield at pennmedicine.upenn.edu. Uh, and again, I hope to see you at one of your office hour sessions this week. Thanks very much.